What's going on, everybody? It's your observant lineman, Uche Waneri. Now, come across a story here. Don't really know what to think about it. Uh, haven't really dove into it. Uh, I saw it just a few moments ago on Twitter. Wanted to jump immediately and see what, what it was really all about. Uh, but I come across a story. Deshaun Watson, one of his accusers, actually coming out and speaking uh, in public about her experience with Deshaun Watson. Obviously, as you all know, uh, he's had some offseason issues that have come out uh, into the public. He's facing some civil suits. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of, of, of awkwardness around the situation. There are different people on different sides who think different things about it. Personally, I'm just waiting to see how it unfolds. But came across this on Amy Dash, CBS sports reporter who put this out there. It was actually a quote tweet from Robert Littell, BSO. Watch one of Deshaun Watson's massage accusers, Nia Reese Lewis Smith, give an interview where she says Watson was adamant about her putting her digits, one of her digits, in his anus and asked her repeatedly, did she want to put her or want to put his uh, junk in her mouth? It's a lot to take in as you see me fumbling over the words. Uh, but, you know, I went from that to the BSO uh, BlackSportsOnline.com. Uh, but there's also a video that come along with this. I have not looked at this video yet. So let's take a look right now. And uh, then let's figure out uh, what, what it really is is this about because that's a very uh, it's a very vivid detail set of details to put out there. So let's take a look at the video. It was okay. it always escalated every appointment. The only thing that really bothered me in the first appointment is he kept asking me to go inside of his butt. And I was just so confused. Normally on my male clients, well, any of my clients, I'll stop at the lower thigh. Okay. And, you know, just some people just don't like their buttocks touched. And so I'll stop at the lower thigh. And he kept asking me to go inside. Like, and inside so I would the, put, like I, the crack or the hole. I originally thought it was the crack. Okay. And so I kind of go around that area. And he still wasn't satisfied and he kept Whoa! Freak alert! Unwine with Ta with Tasha K. Nine hundred and fifty one thousand subscribers. Unwine with Tasha K. Alright, there's some uh there's some weight there, I guess. Yeah. Almost a million subs. Why not? Why not? Okay. Uh, I've, you know, I don't know the, the channel. I don't know, you know, what the, uh, the whole profile of that site is, but wow. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, look, whatever floats your boat, we don't even know if this is true. I mean, she is one of the accusers. So, Hey, let's, uh, I would say let's at least for the moment, give the benefit of the doubt. I mean, really, why is, why is that something that's, that you, that she feels obligated to put out in the public space? I mean, if you're, if you got a lawsuit pending or if you're looking for, uh, you know, some type of investigation, this is kind of a, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's listen to the rest of it. I don't know. This is very, this is, this is, this is weird. This is kind of weird. He was very adamant and he would say, don't be afraid to go inside. And in my mind, I'm like, there's nothing further. There's nowhere I can go unless it's inside of his aim. I mean, she can't even say it. So uh, it's, that's, it's, that's weird. I mean, it's not weird, I guess. I don't know. Damn it. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I mean, why is this being put out in the public space? Is this none of our business? Okay. And it, it, it just totally threw me. Okay. So there's another video that goes along with this as well. I don't know this uh, channel, but I mean, of course, there's tons of channels on YouTube, but obviously, uh, wine in with, with Tasha K. This is where this is coming from. Uh, I don't know what their relationship is to one another. Do they know each other through a friend of a friend of a friend? I have no idea. Uh, so let's see what uh, the rest of this second video, let's see what this second video is talking about. Our next appointment, I didn't think it would, it would turn 
the way it did. What happened? I love how she has this super concerned look on her face. The second appointment was just really inappropriate. He was very um, touchy feely. Um, he was. I guess I would I would ask was he facing down or was he facing or or was he laying on his back? <laughs> Usually fall asleep. That's me. Shoot, <laughs> wake up and uh, the massage is over and I'm like, it's been ninety minutes. I, I just thought I dozed off for a second. No, no, that's that's how it is for me when I get on a massage table. Would act like he accidentally brushed up against my butt. Like if I would be on the side of his neck or if I'd be at the front of the massage table and I would um, massage their neck, he would reach his hands back and try to grab my butt or he would go like this and act like he accidentally brushed up against me. How is she giving this cat a massage? Is she on top of his back, like sitting on top of him? That's, that's a different kind of massage. <laughs> that's not the professional massage if you know what i'm saying i mean hell that's like a tactic you use after a first date um it was to the point where it came a time in the massage where i was massaging him from a distance because he kept trying to touch me and i had to keep jumping back and then um a, like the first massage he basically told me he didn't want the rest of his body massaged he wanted um, his groin area massage and his butt only. Um, he was fully waxed and he he kept saying, do you want to put in your mouth? <laughs> I don't know how to put any of this in context because I want to understand the gravity of it you know, of course, it's not right to do to be reaching for a massage therapist at any time. Of course, let's uh, let's look at the rest of this and then we'll see where, where we take it from there. And yeah, it, it was it was just very, very, very uncomfortable. Uh, I'm trying to be professional, but still get through this hour long massage, you know, without any conflict. I didn't want. I just didn't want any conflict. I knew the owner of the salon, she was very proud to have this person as a client. And that was like her main focus at the time, like keep this person happy. Um, there, there came a time in the massage where he would be erect the entire time. And it was, he had pre-cum coming out of his penis and it was all over his stomach and he kept telling me to rub in that area or try to make me touch it. Okay, that's uh, that's pretty spicy. It's pretty spicy there. Pretty spicy. Well, that is Nia Reese Lewis-Smith. Very uh, interesting story and, and honestly, if it's if these things are true and these things are like, you know, being, in, you know, being presented truthfully, which I have no reason right now to doubt that this story is true. Right now, we just I'm taking it for what it is. I'm looking at it. I'm giving you my opinion. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want uh, anybody to be in a situation like that. If that's the case, you know, these are things that are not supposed to be coming out into the public space until, uh, you know, the court litigation that they have going is concluded to my, you know, to my knowledge. So she did this. Clearly, she did it against her lawyer's uh, advice. And I'm not sure exactly uh, why you would shoot yourself in the foot, because when it gets to court, defense lawyers are going to tear that apart uh, as far as civil uh, lawsuits go. Uh, if there is uh, a story that's put out there and there's not 100 percent understanding you know, generally people will, will tend not to believe it. That's just the, the truth of the matter. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's the way it is. So uh, you would want to have the court system uh, through litigation, uh, hear your information, see your evidence, and you would want for that uh, uh, acclamation of evidence to be able to prove 
that he is guilty in the situation. Therefore, he would have to pay damages because of that. And this would strongly damage that because you're now putting uh, what they would consider circumstantial stuff into uh, the public space, which they can argue she did it because maybe they paid her to come out and speak. Uh, your lawyer is not going to give you the advice to go and do an interview uh, if there's litigation that's pending. So uh, with all of that being said, it would be hard to it would be hard to to actually, you know, and look with Deshaun Watson's case, he has a ton of, of women that are saying have been saying the same thing from the same profession. So you have I mean, maybe you do have a strong civil case. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just saying from a logical standpoint. You want to hold your cards to your chest. Uh, if you just show all your cards immediately, uh, it's going to be hard for you to win. And this is a situation where maybe there's something that's not going on in the court side of this situation, or maybe there's, you know, stresses in life that are putting uh, decisions and uh, making decisions more and more critical. And maybe this is something, you know, get a little money off of. I have no idea. If it were me, if I'm going to do an interview, I'm going to get paid for it so that I have some uh, something to take away from it, at the very least. Because clearly, uh, we don't know of any police uh, investigations that are going on with Deshaun Watson, but there's supposed to be civil matters that are going to be uh, coming to the forefront soon enough. So we'll see how this plays out. But let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments down below. Do you think that this was a wise move by Nia Reese Lewis-Smith to come out and share this information in the public while there's a civil suit that could be pending? Uh, let me know. And if you like this video, hit the like button, and I will catch you all on the next one. I am your observant lineman, Uche Waneri. Peace out.